Good evening from London. Welcome to Piers Morgan Uncensored. At first sight, the British monarchy should already be finished. Let's face it, many people see privilege as a crime against equal opportunity. The monarchy, meanwhile, is undeniably built on illogical birthrights. Populism rages against elites. But the royal family are the most obvious elites of them all. Tribalism and brash opinions dominate public debate in an age of identity politics, but were quietly ruled by an unspeaking authority that takes absolutely no position. And that's really the whole point. Fickle politicians tear strips off each other and survive by dividing us, but the monarchy is a constant. Reassuring, above the fray. That's why it's not only survived, but thrived against all odds. But there is growing evidence of cracks in Britain's gilded edge. Hamza Yousaf, who's the front-runner to be Scotland's next leader, has put the future of the monarchy firmly on the table. I'm a Republican. Uh, I believe that we should be citizens first, not subjects. So we'd keep the monarchy for a period of time, but then I'd hope Scotland, an independent Scotland, would move to be a republic in the future. Well, since then, Mr Yousaf has doubled down on his statement, promising to give the Scottish people a vote on whether to have a monarch or an elected head of state within five years. And then independent Scotland is not the only threat to the monarchy. The late Queen was emphatically more popular than King Charles, for now anyway, and young people are much less enthusiastic about the monarchy. Harry and Meghan's antics have led a global crusade of smears against an unfashionable and what they tried to call a racist institution. Prince Andrew's squalid scandal has heaped massive embarrassment on the Windsors and indeed the institution of the monarchy. Australia has scrubbed King Charles from his banknotes. Barbados ditched the late Queen as head of state. Jamaica will be next to become a republic. And the royals are barracked by protests and demands for reparations whenever they tour the Commonwealth, forcing King Charles to say this. From the darkest days of our past and the appalling atrocity of slavery, which forever stains our history, the people of this island forged their path with extraordinary fortitude. Well, whether the monarchy can survive the era of constant hammering apologies for historical sins is suddenly a rather urgent question, but it should. The monarchy keeps our sense of nation and patriotism separate from politics. It gives us a reason to unite, love our country, its traditions and its identity. It's above the venom of everyday political debate. We could fuse a head of state with a head of government like the US or Turkey or Brazil. Would that really bring us closer together? There's no evidence that it does. God forbid we have a bow to President Farage. We could have a ceremonial overlord like Germany or Ireland who cuts ribbons and shakes hands with the cameras, but is that seriously any better for Brand Britain than the pomp and pageantry of our oldest, greatest tradition? The royals sometimes disappoint us. They're not perfect, they're humans. But the monarchy is worth defending against political attacks like this one from a Scottish nationalist. And it starts with celebrating it, not constantly apologising for its past. Well, joining me now is the former First Minister of Scotland, Alex Salmon, Talk TV contributor Paul Rowan Adrian and chief executive of the campaign group Republic, Graham Smith. Welcome to you all. So, Alex Salmon, um, this guy, Humza Yousaf, don't know much about him, other than he's popped up, may replace Nicola Sturgeon from all the polls. It's the bookie's favourite. Yeah, uh, which is probably never a place you really want to find yourself <laughs> at this stage of the race. But he is clearly not a monarchist and clearly thinks we should just get rid of the monarchy. Do you agree with him? I think he's probably right. I mean, it was different. When I was First Minister, the Queen was head of state. It had to be insane to, to suggest replacing Her Majesty the Queen because of her long service, her popularity, her wisdom. We're a different situation now. And it's quite interesting. If you ask people in Scotland, do you want to keep the monarchy or get the republic? You'll probably get a majority for the monarchy. If you ask the question, if you're setting up an independent Scotland, a new country, should you start with an elected head of state? Then the answer's quite different. You shouldn't. You should move to a, an elected head of state as opposed to the hereditary principle. So, but what is, your, what is your intrinsic argument about the monarchy? Because the, the arguments I hear against it is, well, they cost too much money. But that's palpably yeah. not true. Well, well, they're, they're a net that's, positive. That, that's not my argument. So let's right, move so, on. so let's part... Well, I'm sure it might be one of yours, but we'll part that because they're a net positive. So is it just the idea of an unelected family, yes, which is I, at the head I, of the country. I think if you're, you're setting up a, a new democratic country, you wouldn't start from the hereditary principle. Uh, uh, the monarchy... But I would you say, could, you why, might argue, okay, be jealous, why well, not? Well, well, I don't why know. Not? I don't know. Well, uh, in recent times, I mean, if you go back 100 years, new countries started with new monarchs. I mean, you know, like Norway imported a, 
I don't know, a, a minor German line from somewhere, if I remember correctly, or maybe a minor Swedish line. But right now, in the 21st century, you wouldn't start from the Henry Principle. Uh, also, I, I tend to... I think there's a presidential test in this, Piers. See, if Britain had become a republic during Her Majesty the Queen's reign, and she decided to stand as an elected president, mm. she'd have wiped the floor with any candidate. Yeah. I mean, that wouldn't be the case with King Charles. I mean, <laughs> Gary Lineker would beat King Charles. You probably would beat King Charles. That sounds so surprised. So, so therefore... <laughs> King Piers, I think, would have his own therefore, lustre you know, as well if I went the other way. 21st century, democratic age, you're setting up a new society, written constitution, protecting people's rights. The monarchy, to an extent at least, is the pinnacle of a class system. But when I and look you'd at, want right, to sweep it, that it away. is, it is. But when I look at the way that the American system has worked, with this two-party system fraught with you know, corruption, fraught with people who just have to have a big enough bank balance to run for president, you know, the, the, the division they have in that country, I look at the division in this country, right. I look at the procession of useless leaders we've had, the one constant we've had, mm -hmm. and I genuinely believe this, well, has been the Queen and now Charles... We've had two monarchs in my lifetime, and I do think they provide the country with just a comfort blanket, which should not be underestimated. Well, why are you laughing? Because well, it's we, a comfort blanket. We don't blanket. need a comfort blanket. I, mean, the I think is, we do, if, actually. If you, why? I mean, it's so patronising and it's so <laughs> unpatriotic to suggest that we need a uh, comfort blanket. Uh, I have never heard a good argument for the monarchy, and it certainly isn't a net positive So you didn't see any positives about the Queen? There's no... Well, I mean, it's not about the Queen, it's about the monarchy. Well, the she was the head of the monarchy and for, now we for, have, for 70 years. Right, but now we have... But you saw... No, just to be clear, you saw no positives in the Queen. It's not about the Queen, it's about the monarchy. Well, I'm asking you about the Queen. Well, I don't really know her, and that's the problem. We don't know... Well, how old are you? None of us, none of us really... How old are you? 48. But 48. Us, so for 48 years of your life, she was your monarch. None of us monarch. really knew on, her. Don't, don't squirm off the no. old net here. No, because right? the issue is the monarchy. Did you not understand that she was one of the, not if the most respected people in the world? Well, I, I think that's disputable, but, I mean, the point is... Who was more respected well, than her? That's a silly argument. Well, give me a name. This is a deadline... A de give me a name. This is, I'm, this is a dead-end argument. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the, the interview, but the I argument, ask questions, and your job is to answer them. The argument is So if I ask you, do you not see any positives in the Queen, you'd say no. The argument is about... The discussion is not about which monarch is there, because the Queen's no longer there. So that, with that's respect our, to you, the argument... That's our history. The discussion is whatever I decided it's going to be. That's right? our history. I'm the, asking you... We now have... I, you made a statement about, about the monarchy, and I said to you... Did you see no positives from the Queen? I saw no positives having the Queen as a head of state. Right. Let's put it like you that. didn't now, see I any see benefit no... to the country oh, in terms of the extraordinary esteem and respect she was held around the world. The fact that well, she met more presidents than anybody else. I don't think meeting she met more prime ministers. I, I actually, think... it makes a huge difference. It makes actually. no difference. Well, why don't you ask no the presidents? Why don't no you difference. ask all the presidents who queued right. up when she died but it, to pay full tribute? Actually, if we actually talk about the monarchy rather than the person, no, I want to talk about the have... Queen. Well, why? Because the Queen is no longer because with us. Because for 48 the issue years is of, your, of your monarchy deriding life, the she is, was this extraordinary right. figure who actually earned and she this would country never have been, enormous respect. She would never have been Queen if her uncle wasn't a Nazi sympathiser who was thrown out. She would never have been Queen, or she would have had a very short reign... But she was Queen. ...if her uh, father had lived longer. But she was Queen. Right, but it's completely random, and she's no longer it's here. It's random. She was the, the only monarch we've had the, till the, the new one. The issue is what happens next. Now, the monarchy is, is undemocratic. Well, the issue, actually, let me, uh, the reason the what happens you. next? Here's because the, 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 whole, the top of the story was... It, what's, where don't is you the worry about the, what you're reading on where my is screen. The future right? of the monarchy? I, it's my show, I was, I was and I can ask you anything I like, right? <laughs> and here's my question for right. you. Stop reading that. I'm not reading that. Somebody else has written that, <laughs> not me, right? I don't care I, I what that says. I was responding to what you said when you standing Look at me. Look at me. And here's my point. What you're not factoring in, in this general whine about the institution of the monarchy, is the extraordinary influence and power, in my estimation that Her Majesty the Queen had, and I think Charles can continue... Which is a fiction. Which is and not a fiction. It is a fiction. It's There's no fiction. evidence of it. And the, no evidence of it? Of, let's let's um, summarise why the monarchy is a bad thing. Right? It stands against our democratic principles. The institution has been accused of all sorts of questionable behaviour. It's highly secret. Well, unlike our politicians. Well, it doesn't matter. Our politicians... It doesn't be, matter. Well, it, does our, for, it does for the royals, Our politicians can be thrown out. We right. can't throw Charles out at the next election because there is no election. Mm. And... It's also bad for our constitution. It centralises power in the hands of government at the expense of parliament and people. So the whole point of having a, a republic, and no one, no serious republican in this country is arguing for a US system, <laughs> we're arguing for a parliamentary republic which limits power of the politicians... Which has been going really well in recent years, hasn't it? And has an, what has? Our parliamentary system. 
Well, no, because that's the whole point, Piers. I'm not arguing point? that we reform it by becoming a republic and change, shifting power from government to parliament to people, having a written constitution, yes. and a president okay. like they have Paul. in Ireland and Germany who actually plays Paul, an independent we've got these role. two ardent Republicans here, right? And that's fine. We They're entitled to their opinion, but yeah. the polls are also entitled to their opinion. You got poll in October after the Queen died, about a month later... Um, so keep the monarchy 60%, abolish the monarchy 24%, don't know 15%. Overwhelming support for the monarchy. So these two guys and, can and rant about the monarchy, but the bottom well, line is... going with October. Huh? Recently, it's now 30%, 55%. It's contracting. The growth, there is a growth in support for abolition. And a, it's probably uh, contracting because people like you are running around screaming, get rid of well, it. That's the whole point. And so yeah. well, thank you very much for putting that down to my efforts because the, the point is... Not putting it down to your efforts. <laughs> you just, you, you, that's can you let Paula speak anyway? Certainly. Paula, <laughs> where do you sit with this? The, I think it's it's quite astonishing, actually, to say that the monarchy isn't important to this country and isn't important to the people of this country. I think that's why Piers is so surprised at what you're saying, because uh, as an immigrant, as one adopted um, into this country... There is no doubt in my mind that the Queen has played, uh, and the Queen and the monarchy has played an incredibly important role in society, and one that is reflected, I think, from childhood right up to. And we can see that not only from sadly the passing of the Queen, where I think 4.6 billion people around the world no, they didn't. watched, they watched didn't. that, that ceremony. And this is the problem: is the monarchy I mean, relies on it, fantasy. It, it may be a fantasy, but you're that's what I understand. The, the figures the world's say. Popular. The figures are um, fantasy, and so. Uh, I think it is surprising that you can sit here and at least at least well, acknowledge. I can acknowledge the, that the figures she, you're putting out. Uh, do you ever leave this country? Acknowledge the go to impact that she's had. Sorry? Do you ever go to America? I go around the world. When were you last in America? I haven't been to the United States, but I'm not. Right, so you've never been to the, the it place. Hang it on. doesn't matter because no one me, is arguing for a US you keep, system. You keep responding by saying it doesn't matter because you don't want to answer the question. But it, no one is arguing. You haven't for even a US heard the question system. yet. No one is arguing for. I haven't asked you the question yet. Here's my question. If you've never been to the United States, I've lived and worked there for the last 20 years, then you will have no comprehension of the extraordinary respect they have for the Queen, for King Charles now, for the monarchy. And it is an abiding respect that they have. And that's why they all want to come on the state visits and get the red carpet treatment but, but at the I, palace. And I think it's actually really important to our special relationship with the United States, the world's number one superpower. I have... The, 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 the royal family have been able to be this bridge, constant bridge, through all the political turmoil. Alex? Well, I'm just going to say that been the last direct experience that the Americans had of monarchy was George III, yeah, which, which, which didn't go particularly well. Well, it went so, well for them. So you say, it didn't go well for us. You say that the Queen was an exceptional monarch. I agree with you. Uh, I, I got on absolutely famously with the Queen. I, I like Prince Charles. I think he's a great guy. That's not my argument. I've got no King, animus... King Charles. King Charles. I have no want to get animus... Animus whatsoever. Yeah, but that's not, because, the queen. That's not because I don't like Being a humble and obedient It's because servant. if you ask people the question, you're setting up, in the case of an independent Scotland, a new country, would you set it up with the hereditary principle or would you set it up on democratic Well, I think it's a really principles? good argument. And I actually don't agree that the hereditary principle that has been established by this monarchy in the last hundred years or so, certainly, I can look at, you know, from my lifetime and certainly beyond, I think it's been a power of positivity for the country. And I would the hereditary my... principles are power of positivity. Well, I just think you have this family so at the top be more of our... exact... Well, they don't have any executive power. Right? right? Do so they? They, they interfere. You, you they don't have any executive power. They interfere. Right, okay. The monarch doesn't interfere. Right, OK. Yes, he let, let's well, he hasn't, he doesn't. You think Charles will be a good king. He might do, well, yeah. he might well be a good king. I think he's already let's, showing that. Let's say, let's say Andrew had been the elder son. Yeah. He'd be a good king. Well, he's not. Yeah, well, we'll kick this, but I mean, you know, it's the, so it's a lottery. Would he have been any worse as a king and, than and Boris Johnson the, was as prime well, minister? Or but, his trust? Or, yes, yes, but the point. In other words, where's the proof? Where is the proof that Johnson elected politician can do Bo any better? Yes, but Boris Johnson is no longer prime minister. Right. Liz Truss is no longer prime minister. But the greatest you're kinda, you're kinda leader, stuck the greatest with leader monarch. of the last hundred years, I would say, was Queen Elizabeth. Well, that, of any kind. That is not a credible well, argument because it is a credible she, she argument. Was, she was she never was the longest she reigning. She was protected by. She was the most respected she in was, all the polls she than was, anybody. She was not required to do or say anything of any particular uh, controversy. She was never subjected to an election. She was never suggested to uh, subject to won public the scrutiny. Well, well, she, I, I, well, I, I think that's. Yes. I think that's uh, high. Uh, I uh, think uh, the uh, Charles uh, would Republic. be. He would be defeated heavily because the point is, in an election, he would have to sit here, be challenged by people like you. Mm. He would have to stand in a, in a studio and 
be challenged by other candidates. Yeah, and he would be an expert. You seem remarkably, yeah, to be fair, you, you seem remarkably now, blinkered, to be Graham, fair. to any potential positive of the monarchy. When, to me, it's indisputable in the last hundred years, which is, the, the, let's say, the modern times of the monarchy, that they have been a force for good. But they haven't. But they have. what, what good? What good have they done? What they have done, they've propped up a, a rotten constitution. They have been a secretive institution. The single biggest they events have... in the world, outside of massive news tragedies and disasters and terror attacks, have been the big royal events. Look at the last year alone, the death of the Queen and her funeral. So that's a really positive thing for No, no, no. Order. What's positive is the way that we then acknowledge yeah. these great moments in the royal family and we recognise how influential the Jubilee, they are in the world. The Jubilee how last the year, 14%, are... only 14% of the country wanted to celebrate the Jubilee uh, last year. In 2011, 79% of the population that's, said they were not interested. That is a completely interested. untrue statistic. This but, is but absolutely... Also, I'm sorry, 14, this is, only 14% wanted you, to celebrate. You yeah. go polling... 14% wanted to celebrate it. YouGov polling in 2011, 79% were not interested. 2018, 66% were no, not well, interested. I, I'm, but, you know, the, I, I, the, the bottom I, I, line... I, I don't share... I don't, I don't, I don't, share, share I don't believe those stats. I don't share the well, historicity of the family. Well, that's but, not, it's not true, then. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not close to play, home. Blatantly obvious, when it happened, more than 15% celebrated it. So it's obviously but, not... Piers, there is close to home a rather successful example of a presidential system, and that's the Republic of Ireland. Mm. They've had a cracking series of presidents mm. by mm. any estimation. You know, Mary Robinson, Mary McAleese, uh, President Higgins. I mean, have been first-class presidents yeah. in them. a presidential Good system. So, but, well, but Piers, your argument seems to rest on the, Her Majesty the Queen was an exceptional woman. I agree. I and don't, I actually I, think, I don't agree with I think King Charles is an exceptional man. Well, well, time Do. will tell, but, I'm, Do. but it is, there is an argument. And the truth is, if you were still the <laughs> SNP up, leader, as we've just seen with you with the Queen, you'd have been... Brown nosing away with the new king for your heart's content, no, wouldn't think, you? I, We've just no, been seeing you doing I, it with I, the no, queen. I, well, to, to, to me, the watershed, the the watershed was the death of the queen. I, I think it would have been ridiculous to, Paula, to argue. You've been shouted down. Here, I right? have been. I have. Do I think that he's the very best that we yes. have to have to offer? We will find out. What is it that you want? Do you want a referendum? Do you want a Brexit-style split? This society doesn't need that. No, the that's... monarchy is loved in this country. Well, listen, Whether really. you accept you that or not. You want more elected people it or not. of the kind that we have with Liz Truss. I think it's absurd. Who tank the pound, it is tank absurd. the economy, it is absurd. and have to go after 44 allow... days and away. can't outlive a lettuce. So you've got the choice of a monarch in the last 70 years as a, as a lovely, Charles marvellous is not going figurehead to last 70 in the country years. who's a calming influence respected around the world, or Liz Truss, who couldn't out survive Charles, who refuses, you would to, go with more Charles, who refuses to pay income tax, refuses to pay inheritance tax, demands secrecy, was accused by me to the police of uh, the cash royal family is estimated to contribute around two point five which is million. Not true. Which is not you that. seem not true to every stat you don't like. No, you then come up with a load of baloney stats which aren't Piers, true. Piers, you literally just dis dismissed. You're completely you, delusional, you, aren't you? you? You dismissed YouGov stats. You're quoting a report that has no sources whatsoever. Right. There is no evidence whatsoever that's good financially for this country, and it is a massive drain on our resources. But that's not the reason. No. They put MPs' expenses Listen. into right. uh, into the shade with their public you. money. I respect your opinion, but you're completely wrong. Uh,